I am Yuzu from um, Tokyo team, um, Chrome team, uh, architecture. I'm working on backward cache and um, I'm co-presenting with Alexander, um, who's sitting over there um, from London. And today I'd like to talk about what freezing means. And we have, Chromium has um, several projects going on around freezing and why we want to freeze pages and how we freeze in terms of architecture and what does it mean for you, you as in web developers and also web platform API developers. So what is freezing? Freezing is a state where um, we um, want to stop executing something on the page. So it's a new state in the page where um, a page or a part of the page stops working, stop executing things. And in this state, user agent stops executing the work on behalf of, on behalf of the page. So the North Star um, in terms of architecture is um, user agent can take any logical part of the page at any time and tell it to stop. Um, stop using any of the resources of um, computer resources like CPU and network. And we have several Chromium projects around freezing. Um, for example, background tab freezing, iframe.freeze, and back forward cache. So, why do we want to freeze pages? First reason is to um, manage the computer resources in a smart way, like modern OS. And background tab freezing and iframe.freeze is about resource, better resource management. And second is about correctness. Um, freezing enables projects like back forward cache because back forward cache um, expects the page to be frozen and not working. And, and we would like to satisfy the user expectations by um, implementing freezing. So now I'd like to talk about like each project. Um, backward top freezing is driven by Kate Katan's team in Montreal, and we are given just an overview. And if you have any questions, you can talk to Francois and other Kate Katan's team. And background tab freezing is trying to solve the problem where um, a background tab is consuming a lot of computer resources like CPU or memory or um, sending a, a, an unimportant IPC to the browser process, and um, it might affect the foreground tab's performance. And um, background tab freezing is, is trying to solve the problem by freezing eligible pages after being in backgrounded um, for five minutes. So um, there is a policy that um, Chromium um, has decided on um, what is the eligible pages for freezing. So we use a lot of heuristics and also um, there's an explicit opt-out um, option via origin trial. The project status is um, on mobile, it's already shipped, and um, on desktop we are targeting M80. So for freezing iframes, um, Dave Tavska here is working on this project. And um, iframes, um, so the problem is that um, invisible iframes that are not on the viewport can take up a lot of computer resources. So, but however, um, sometimes those invisible iframes are very important, so user agents cannot simply freeze them. So that's why it's um, opt-in to opt-in feature. And um, this iframe.freeze allow websites to opt into um, freezing invisible iframes. And there, there are new um, document and feature policies like um, what type of iframes do you want to freeze, like out of viewport or um, not rendered. And the project status is, um, it's already implemented, but it depends on um, isolation or, of iframes of the same origins. So the next project is back forward cache. Back forward cache is a project where um, when user navigates away, um, Chrome do not, or user agent do not um, delete the page, but instead keep the page in memory. And we use the page kept in memory when user navigates back. So it's improving the back forward button. And in this case, users do not expect the page to be alive because they already navigated away from the page. So page in BF cache should not do any work. And that's where freezing comes in. So user agent freezes the page when user navigates away. The project status is um, in, we are currently developing this in Chrome and we are aiming at trials in Q1 2020. And you can talk to us um, if you're more interested. And um, now we have 
different projects um, around freezing with different requirements. And as you can see on the table, um, they have very different like um, requirements, like who initiates the freezing. Um, iFriend I freeze is initiated by websites, whereas um, background tab freezing and for background cache, it's user agent that initiates freezing. And the timing of the freezing is different um, depending on the project too. And background tab freezing, um, it's whenever user agents want, it's more, it's more flexible in terms of timing when to freeze. But for iframe.freezing, it's um, according to the feature policy. And also for background forward, ca back forward cache, um, it's immediately after user navigates away from the page when freezing. So um, yeah, also like um, it's different from project to project if whether we can do some work during freezing for background back forward cache, it's no, like we cannot do, it, we cannot um, execute any of the tasks in the cached page, whereas for the other projects, it's more um, best effort freezing is okay. So currently it's tempting to have um, different implementations for different projects because they have all the different requirements like this. However, um, ultimately, um, for the web platform predictability, we would like to unify the architecture of freezing um, for the sake of both um, web developers and also Chromium developers. Also, from the perspective of web compatibility and interop, it's very, um, it's very important for us because Safari and Firefox already implemented um, back forward cache. So we would like to align um, to align our freezing implementations with other browser vendors as well. So now I'm going to talk about how we freeze in terms of architecture. So the spec already requires that the tasks from frames, which can synchronously script, synchronously script each other, um, should run in order. So basically, the tasks coming from the same agent should run in order. So as you can see in the picture, um, the same or the same origin iframes like a.com, document a.com and iframe a.com belong to the same agent. So the tasks coming from those um, those two frames should run in the in the order. And also it applies to same origin window dot open. So um, um, implementation wise, like Agent, each agent has event loop, each event loop. And for freezing, we freeze those event loops and we stop running tasks for the frozen event loops. And that's how we, um, how we are implementing freezing. And for some APIs, stopping event loop is enough for those APIs to work. Like set timeout works perfectly just by stopping the event loop. However, for other APIs, special treatment might be necessary. For example, um, APIs that maintain the list of all the frames, like service worker and broadcast channel, it is um, it is an open question where um, it is an open question whether to treat the frozen frames as normal frames, or should we include the frozen frames into the list of all the frames or not? And the second example is that APIs that maintain the active connection, like network requests, web socket, and web web locks. Like it's um, not clear whether um, the other end of the connection, um, what the other end of the con the connection should do uh, when the page gets frozen. And the third example is that um, APIs that add more event loops, for example, like workers and worklets can add um, workers. So it's basically adding more event loops. And maybe we should like, when stopping the event loop, maybe we want to stop those newly created event loops as well. So we are still figuring, trying to figure out like what the right solutions are for each API. So that's where we would like your input. And also in addition to that, the page itself should know when it gets frozen so that the page can save its state and restores it later when the page gets resumed. So that's where page lifecycle APIs um, comes in place. Um, page lifecycle API unfortunately already has the page um, state frozen, as you can see in the diagram. Um, so when it gets frozen, it goes into this frozen state. And um, when it gets resumed, like it goes back to the normal state. So um, there are new callbacks like on freeze and on resume for the page to 
um, react to the, those um, freezing events and um, the resuming events. So having these APIs allows the pages to implement the custom logic for freezing um, suitable for their app, like closing or re-establishing the connection inside the callbacks. So um, for web platform APIs, um, I, I know that many of you are experts on, on the web platform API, so we would like to give we would like to get opinions on like how they should behave um, on the on the freezing uh, on freezing. And um, yeah, web platform APIs are very diverse, and there is no one size fits all solution for um, freezing, like what they should act. And short term solution here is unfortunately like we do not we just do not freeze pages using certain APIs because the behavior is complicated. However, in the long term, we would like to freeze everything, all the pages. So let's discuss how we get there. And on the um, and the implementation detail wise, um, features can implement the um, behavior by listening to the blink context lifecycle state observer because frozen state is already exposed to the blink. So the only question here is what is the right behavior? So let me talk. What, let me walk through each API that can be um, um, that, can, that have like uh, open questions. So the first category is APIs that add more event loops. Um, for example, dedicated worker, like dedicated worker's lifetime is tied to a page, so we can simply freeze it. So this one is pretty simple. For the shared worker, it's already deprecated, so we are not really supporting the freezing mechanism for this. And for worklets, we have not really looked into it because there are different types of worklets like animation and audio worklet and we are not sure um, we are not really sure like what to do with each of the worklet and for the service worker like li the life lifetime of the service worker is not tied to a page so we do not freeze the service worker itself however there are more interesting aspects to it so i will talk about it later and the second category is that apis that maintain the active connection and as I said, the other other end of the connection, like the um, other end of the connection, um, the behavior, like what to do on the other end, is the problem here. And the connection might either like time out, or other pages expect the connection to be closed. So that's the problem. And for APIs like WebSocket, we could um, possibly close the connection when freezing and expect the page to uh, reconnect reconnect the um, connection in the on resume callback. That's one possibility. And for the network requests like XML, HTTP requests and fetch, like we could close the connection and dispatch an error or um, automatically retry the connection, uh, the fetching after resuming, or we could just continue the network request. So those are the open questions. And for weblock, like we could, um, the the um, the foreground tab might want to acquire the lock that's already gained by a frozen frame, and that could be problematic. So can we ask pages to reacquire the lock, and we could like release the lock that's um, gained by a um, frozen frame? That's one option. And for index DB. Um, what should we do with the ongoing transactions and like, like if the page gets frozen? So those are the questions that we have. And there are more APIs like this, like screencasting, WebRTC, and web sensors. And the third category is that um, is um, APIs that maintain the list of all frames. Like um, should we include the frozen frames or not in this list, basically? Like for example, for broadcast channel, um, should we deliver the messages sent to the frozen frame? Like if we don't deliver the messages to a frozen frame, it might um, might be risky because it could break the pages because we just dropped the drop the messages. But if we do deliver the messages to the frozen frames, like it could, the messages will be just queued inside of the frame, so it could lead to a memory leak. So both have pros and cons. And for service worker. Um, should the question here is should service worker get the list of clients 
including the frozen frames, including the frozen clients? And if so, how should it work? And now I'd like to talk about talk more about the service worker and freezing. So as I said, service worker itself does not freeze because the lifetime is different from the page. However, it can interact with frozen clients. And um, APIs like clients.get and clients.matchall, like um, um, so frozen clients um, can be accessed um, uh, should it be um, able, should it be like accessible um, from those APIs? And also um, service workers should know, probably should want to know about the life cycle changes like freezing and resuming. And it's an open question where, whether frozen client handle should continue to work or not. And version update is um, a little bit complicated. Like frozen clients, um, could block the version activation, but maybe you should not. So that's a, another question. And clients.post message um, has a similar problem as a broadcast channel. Like we could queue the messages posted to frozen clients, or we could drop them, like um, risking the uh, page correctness. Also, another question here is that um, whether back forward cache is identical, should behave identically to um, freezing background tabs. Um, because the user expectation is, a, is slightly different from back forward cache and freezing background tabs. Um, users expect BF cached page to be gone, navigated away, but background tabs should exist. However, in the long term, probably um, from the web compatibility and also from the um, user predictability perspective, we want to unify the implementation and behavior um, in the long term. So in summary, um, freezing is coming to the web platform in different projects like background of freezing and iframe.freeze and back forward cache. And as I listed, many web platform APIs will require freezing support. And there are many unknowns and open questions about, about how those APIs should behave on freezing. And the next steps for us is um, unifying the architecture of freezing and also supporting more web platform APIs and also specking the freezing behavior and adding more web platform tests. So this is the final slide that I have. So thank you for listening. And also we'd like to start discussing and I'll take questions. Thank you. Sorry. So one of the APIs you said just worked is set timeout. Yes. Um, is there any concern around, like, the page has many timers and they're frozen, like, let's say in BF cache, and then the user navigates back, like a storm of tasks, like if the timers all expire and then you get, like, a storm of tasks right when you click the back button? Is there any mitigation we're doing for that? Can you, Alexander? You can. Do you, sorry. Not at the moment. Uh, we have been experimenting with lowering priorities for set timeouts. So basically, set timeouts are good in that regard. So if you if you lower their priority, nothing breaks. Sure. Just as a data point, I think Firefox, at least for BF Cache, their brand of freezing for BF Cache, when uh, it goes into the BF Cache, they effectively pause the timers. And then when it comes out of BF cache, they update the time with the amount of time it was in in the frozen state. They essentially added to the timer. So it looks like the timer is only running when the page is non-frozen. Um, and that avoids this storming issue. I don't know if we want to do something similar, just throwing it out there. Like even the API is a thing like they, they just work well. There's nuance, so right, it's complicated. Right. Sounds like we have to do something there. I mean, maybe, yeah, metrics. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of uh, similar to my question is it seems like a lot of these things should be able to be determined by other browsers and their BF cache implementation. Um, you know, it, to the extent that users enjoy those and, and haven't, you know, I've had many years to scream about the consequences um, and file bugs, we should probably be able to copy and, and spec and web platform test all the same type of behaviors for the freezing we want. So I'm curious what your thoughts are. Right. Like I, I only can talk about the BF cache part, but um, we do not yeah. have a lot of like web platform uh, test coverage. If we are talking about implementation, 
is it recorded? If we're talking about BF Cache implementation of other browser vendors, that's I would say that they are <clears throat> not very consistent and we don't necessarily want to just copy what they do because for example, I think Safari cancels network requests without dispatching any errors at all. So it just drops it silently. So we want a line, uh, I think all implementations there, but it's going to be work on our, on our part as well as theirs. I don't think no other browser has shipped the page lifecycle, right? So, and they're, sure, they're not certain about, that. yes. Having worked on Firefox and the service worker implementation like, and BF Cache there, I can tell you that there are known bugs that have been around for a very long time. And I think that there is some, a data point there that they haven't been fixed over a very long time. Maybe they're not as critical, you know, from a like so theoretical purity point of view. I guess for, for browser or for Firefox, BF Cache implementation is not that great. I, I don't want to say that. Um, I, I mean, so. <laughs> They do not cache unload handlers, which is sort of fifty percent of all the pages. Right. They're, the way they solve a lot of this is if a feature is in use, then it doesn't go into BF cache. Yes. So I mean that basically hurts coverage. Cor correct. Um, so yes, Firefox sacrifices coverage for correctness. Safari sacrifices correctness for coverage. Ideally, we want to get both. It's complicated, yeah. <laughs> uh, can you move to the slide about the plans for shared workers? Sure. Uh, shared worker is not deprecated, so <laughs> I hope that will be supported by VFCash. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Sorry, I was misunderstanding them. <laughs> Sorry, I was just going to say, at least in Firefox, they do try to do some freezing for shared worker, but it really doesn't make a lot of sense. Having looked at that code, I would start by treating it like service worker. It's sort of like an external thing. In BF cache world, you probably want to treat it as being disconnected from the shared worker. So if like everything that is connected to the shared worker, all those documents are in BF cache, you probably want to let the sh shared worker die, mm -hmm. just like a service worker would be allowed to, I see, I see. to so, move to its things. next life cycle. But, yeah. right. Hey, so uh, I work on the uh, WebAuthn API, and a couple of weeks ago, we got this completely random patch saying, oh, uh, if uh, you read this API is being used, disable the uh, BF cache for security reasons. Uh, so what are some of the uh, security considerations that are involved into particularly BF cache? Like for example, like geolocation. Um, so if uh, the page, if user navigates away from the page and if the backgrounded page, I mean the navigated away page still uses the geolocation, like um, it's kind of not desirable for the security reason. Security? Is it privacy? Both. Um, both, I guess. <laughs> so we would like to like we'd like not cache those pages with those features. Wait, it's uh, it's about okay. so it's about page not being able to see some updates from the world. For example, geolocation is a good example. If you have a BF cached page which is not there, you don't want it to see the updates to the locations for for example if it's five minutes in your in the bf cache we don't want to give the access to the location updates during these five minutes okay um I, i'm guessing uh with our, our particular case maybe there was like some more specific reason than I, that but i guess disabling it doesn't hurt so yes I, I think at the moment uh, we are being overly cautious and we are disabling everything that looks suspicious. And we'll talk with sort of you, with uh, API experts, going forward. Uh, 
Um, my question is uh, that uh, we have so many behavior changes when the page is frozen and, uh, and resume. So uh, is it possible to make those changes uh, to be standardized uh, so that uh, web developers can know what will happen if uh, my page was frozen and what will happen if my page is resumed instead of uh, just listed in the size? Um, so is that possible to make it standardized? To standardize of uh, those behavior. I think that's what we are aiming at, yes. right? In the long term. Okay. Medium term. <laughs> Medium term. <laughs> Any other question or comments? I think we're just on time. Last question one. <laughs> I, I I came in a little bit late, so I'm sorry if you spoke about this. I missed it. But do you have any metrics or anything about the benefit we see when it is enabled, and like freezing is actually working, like reduces number by X? <laughs> Uh, yes, so so there are different types of freezing. You're talking about background tab freezing for it's not BF cache freezing. Yeah, so background tab freezing it reduces the number of tasks that run in background, uh, and the the most important one it reduces memory usage, and we see that uh, because the page is not able to run task, it cannot allocate more memory, and even more important, it reduces uh, uh, resident set. So it allows the OS to page uh, to swap out memory to disk, and it allows us to reduce the number of tabs that get discarded. Jeez, uh, it's independent from freezing. It's independent from freezing. Uh, if we freeze everything, yeah. then GC is not running because nobody kicks it off. I guess I'm wondering, like, if you're not allocating anything, but then can GC still throw away the stuff that it was like? Unconnected when you have from yes, yes, yeah, yeah, but just not touching the memory allows the OS to swap out to disk, which is one of the main things we see. Yeah. Any questions? I think we are just on time. Thank you very much for coming. Okay.